Ever wondered how many vehicles are driving on German roads with undetected suspension defects? What potential does this open up for you as a workshop and what advantages does it offer your customers? That's what we're going to discover in this video. Okay, Mustafa, today we want to clarify what issues there can be to the suspension. For the sake of interest, the first question, how many cars are driving on German roads with undetected damage, so that they don't know their suspension is defective? According to the study by the ZDK, 15 to 20 percent of vehicles have some kind of defect in the suspension. 15 to 20 percent is quite a lot, and you know how many vehicles there are in Germany? As a mechanic, as a workshop, how can you prevent this from happening in the first place? You have to be attentive when talking to the customer at the direct reception. Listen to the customer properly and see what he tells you. If he says, my vehicle is unstable if I drive loaded, it wobbles too much. These are the early signs of bigger problems and something we should investigate further. Because, of course, not every driver can interpret the feel of their own car. Not so much that you can ascertain what the issue is by their description. Correct. Therefore, as a mechanic, you perform the visual inspection on the ramp. Exactly. We've taken the wheel off here. The tire is a very important component, which basically also reveals whether there is damage to the suspension. Irregular wear, profile course, sawtooth, these are such factors which are produced also by the defects at the suspension. We now have dismantled the wheel here. You can see suspension, spring, shock absorber and other components. At the front axle everything is so far okay. But we found a flaw on the rear axle that I'd like to show you. Very good. Okay, I can see right now there's oil on the side here where it doesn't belong. Actually, it should be in the damper. Correct. I can see that right now, but are there more defects? Exactly. What you can see here is, of course, the oil leakage, which is why then the shock absorber eventually becomes ineffective and the grip levels of the tire deteriorate. This means that the tire can wobble, the vehicle can roll, and all the assistance systems such as ABS, ESP are, of course, immensely impaired by this, which restricts their function. That's relevant for safety. That's right. And it is, of course, also important to always exchange both shocks and tires in pairs. But beyond that, of course, you have to look at other components, as we can see here, for example, the bump stop, the pressure stop, which basically runs into the oil here every time the suspension compresses in extreme situations, which is why it naturally absorbs the oil, soaks it up, and of course, also gets contaminated as a result. If I now install the old components with the new shock absorbers, this can of course lead to consequential damage to the new products, which is why the function of the shock absorbers is then of course seriously affected. That means as a mechanic, I can create the next defect myself if I don't pay close attention to replacing all the components. That's right. And in pairs, you already mentioned that. That is, if the right shock absorber is defective, I must also replace the left shock absorber, although that may still be okay? Exactly. Okay, it's always a condition that can only be roughly estimated by visual inspection. But the mileage is also a factor with a big impact, which is why then, of course, exchanging the pair makes sense. It's good to install premium products, of course, but equally, it is also essential that the work is also premium. In general, you can already see that it is a very complex issue. However, it's important to think of everything to make cars safer in Germany. Correct. We've just talked in detail about your oily and therefore defective damper, but there are other defects we want to address. Right. Talking about the shock absorbers, not only oil leakage can lead to a defect, but the shock absorber itself can lose the damping performance by the continuous operation and by the load. This means that the shock absorber can no longer hold the wheel securely to the road. Likewise, if the dust boot is defective, the shock absorber is no longer protected at the piston rod, and as a result, stone chips damage the piston rod, and therefore the sealing package leaks, and the shock absorber has oil leakage. We also have electronic shocks that are then wired directly to the vehicle and communicate with the control unit. Here you can basically use the diagnostic tool to electronically check the shock for faults. Of course, this makes it easier for me as a mechanic to get information by a test device. 
Does the suspension work or not? But not every component can be tested electronically. Right. Here we have the add-on parts, such as the strut mount, which is the link between the suspension and the vehicle. This can distort the axle geometry due to wear, which is why irregular wear in the tire tread would be consequential damage. It's the same with a pivot bearing on the front axle. It can cause cracking noises due to wear during the steering process. The bump stop limits the spring deflection. If it crumbles due to weather and wear, the wheel can compress much further and contact between the tire and the vehicle can no longer be prevented. The same goes for the component protection on the suspension parts. Another important component is, of course, our suspension spring. Of course, it can happen that it gets fatigued and weakened by operation, or that it can also suffer from severe corrosion or breakage. I determined this during the visual inspection. So the visual inspection is essential. In any case, just like the test drive. Let's talk about the test drive now. Every car that is in the workshop must of course be test driven by the master mechanic. On this test drive, I'm just listening for noises from the suspension. That is, do I have a rumble, for example? That's a possibility. The other thing is how stable is the car? Does the car swerve under braking? This can also be an indication of a defect in the suspension. What's it like when braking? Does the nose of the car dive? How does it behave in a curve? Does it pull a little to one side or the other? How does it affect my confidence as a driver? These are all points that I pay attention to. What about crosswind sensitivity, for example? That is, if the region allows it, I pass a bridge and then I notice directly, OK, does it work or doesn't it? Another option is to use a suspension tester. Suspension tester sounds a bit like what I know from motorsport, the seven post. The race car is placed on it, it gets really shaken up and it's kind of like that, right? Yeah, something like that. The car is also really shaken. That means that the tires are standing on these test plates. And then we have this movement, and it's checked at what point the tire, let's just say, leaves this plate and the grip is no longer guaranteed. In the workshop, we then look exactly at what the difference is from the left to the right side of the axle. If it's too large, the mechanic must find the defect. So that means we always really look up everything there. From the tyre to the support bearing, it all goes in there. The interesting thing is that we have made such a suspension tester mobile. That means we have a trailer where our colleagues drive out to the workshop and then carry out a suspension test day with the workshop and then, yes, then really bring the subject of suspension a little closer. Through this analysis, I can give added value to the customer. I can show him in black and white, look at your vehicle, your suspension is no good anymore. We're going to have to do something about that. Then you get a better degree of capacity utilization in your workshops, which is positive for you, but also for the customer. The customer gets a better, safer vehicle again, is happier, and will come back to you next time. So it's a classic win-win situation. Are you more interested in the topic of suspension now, or do you still have any questions? Visit the Bilstein website. At the workshop portal, you'll find the Bilstein Academy, where you can register at any time.